We're in one of my recently finished projects in Leslieville. It's a downtown community in Toronto. It's a Victorian home that had tons of character, lots of curb appeal, and my clients fell in love with it from the beginning. And they also had a really great vision for what they wanted it to be. And so did I. So here we are, and I'll show you around. So when I first saw this space, it was divided up how it was built. The front was a formal living room, the center of the home was a dining room, there was a very small kitchen in the back, but there was so much potential to make it more. We started with the kitchen. My clients, Adam and Ryan, really wanted an island, so the best place to do that was at the widest part of the home, being the center of the house. I love this because it's the hub of the home. We've got the dining room on one side, the living room on the other, and it's a really nice, generous space. It's also nice and bright because of this extra window. The cabinets are a black shaker finish, which I really love and actually did in my own home. Instead of a real marble, we went with a very good faux. We knew we wanted the wearability of quartz, so it was finding something that looked the most like marble as possible. There's some natural veining and the overall color is kind of light white and gray. The appliances are black stainless steel, so they really blend well into the cabinets. I also love the styling, these kind of meaty handles. They're quite industrial. It's more of a chef's kitchen kind of feel. Uh, we repeated that also on the dishwasher and then the matching gas range. Really sexy if you ask me. This section here with the range is my favorite part of the kitchen because it's symmetrical with this very simple mod vent hood flanked by the walnut shelves, which really relate to the tone of the floor and add a lot of warmth and interest to the relatively black and white space. Because this isn't a giant kitchen, we wanted to have some relief. If with upper cabinets, it would get a little heavy, so the open shelves are the perfect solution for this. We changed the countertop over in the coffee bar area. It's a nice warm wood that relates well to the shelves. So the living room was originally a tiny kitchen. We turned it into a living room because we knew we wanted the most amount of light. And by adding these great industrial style sliding doors, it's really maxed that out. And it really lends to the kind of overall feel of the house. I like this space because it's all you need. There's enough room for a couch, a couple of chairs, a TV, and it also really sets the tone. It's something you see the minute you walk in the door because of this great sight line from the front. And its proximity to the kitchen is great because it's a little more like an open style living plan, but it's still separated. So you still have privacy from the kitchen. Adam and Ryan really wanted one of these Serge Mui style lights and this is a great application for it because it almost fills the room, adds a lot of nice accent lighting and just quite impressive and I really love the way it looks with the door. So the dining room was originally a living area with French doors onto the dining area. It was a bigger space so we've kind of maintained the same footprint but we're able to carve out some space for a small powder room and the entranceway. We went with a hex mosaic on the floor which you would often see in like a bistro restaurant and it really sets the tone when you walk in the door because of all the black and white and the feeling of tradition but then it's also pretty cool and contemporary and will live on for many many years to come. The black doors are also a really impactful part of this entranceway. The details like the crystal knobs and the little bits of brass are really the kinds of things we went for here. Knowing the place was going to be kind of simple and mod, I wanted to have these moments of traditional to really tie it into the bones of this Victorian home. The powder room is always an opportunity to really go for it, whether that's wallpaper or paint, or in this case, a really interesting floor. We brought in this traditional tile. It has a beautiful shade of pink in it that isn't really found anywhere else throughout the home, but it's also really cool because of that. We wanted this to feel, again, like a restaurant, like something very special. Also a great opportunity to take a selfie. The dining room works really well because there's seating for eight if you'd like and there's enough room to really get around the space and it actually is like an extension of the entranceway when you're not using it for formal dining. One of the major focal points in my favorite parts of the house has got to be this fireplace. It's actually been clad with a fake brick which looks really real mainly because of the finish. I think the paint really helps kind of hide that it's not real brick. And also the way we installed it, we put the soldier course above the top of the fireplace to really sell it that this is possibly real brick. The backyard is a major transformation that Adam and Ryan really led the charge on. There's three different zones. This upper tier is mainly for cooking. There's also a dining area and then a lounging area. The large deck makes it really easy to take care of because there's very little maintenance. Despite all the decking and hard surfaces, they've really softened it with different trees and greenery and things that really grew and filled in quickly as well. It looks like a more mature garden, even though it was all just planted last summer. It kind of feels like a chic urban getaway. 
This was the largest bedroom in the house, so an obvious choice to become the master. One of the biggest changes we did was vault the ceiling to really take advantage of the attic space which was unused. It's created this really great volume of space. This built-in wardrobe is a major focal point when you walk in this space. It's big and has lots of storage in it. It was an opportunity to do something unique because we didn't have space for a walk-in. I also love these little details like these interesting knobs and the lights, which not only add a little bit of sparkle, they're also functional because they light up the interior of the wardrobe. The master bathroom is a much more modern moment in this home, but I really love how it turned out. Went with a really generous walk-in shower with faux marble walls and an oversized ledge detail for shampoos and soap. On the opposite side is a vanity with a few details that I really love. It's exaggerated backsplash and the overlapping mirror and the wall-mounted faucets with these really large vessel sinks. It was a real puzzle to get this exactly the way it is, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. The guest bedroom is one of the smaller rooms in the home, but the proportions work well with a queen-size bed and it could easily be turned into a kid's bedroom in the future. I think one of my favorite parts are the windows. We went with a pair of smaller windows opposed to one large. They feel a little more traditional and more like the front of the home. The walls in this room are a pale grey and the trim is painted out the same colour but in a satin finish. It's a nice change from the all white of the rest of the home, but it's still not too jarring and really connects well to the rest of the spaces. The guest bathroom is tiny, but we really made the most of it. It has a full-size tub, a standalone vanity, and lots of space for storage. I also changed up the wall colour in this room to a really vibrant green, which relates to the other accents and pillows and all the greenery that you see throughout the home. The floor is a simulated terrazzo, which looks very real. I also love the walnut on the vanity and the window in this bathroom. It was an important detail for me to frame it in this subway tile. And, really kind of set off that black frame. It's also a great place to style and really change out seasonally if you decide. So the third floor wasn't here when we started. It was an addition that we added and really transformed this home. It allowed us to have a second living area and this office which could also be used as a guest bedroom. There's also a smaller version of the slider on the main floor with that industrial look and the oversized mullions. The real goal with this addition was to create more square footage. We could either dig out the basement and create another living room down there, or go up and create a bright, lofty space like we've done. The sectional sofa just hugs the corner and really allows traffic to still flow through the space. I also really like this office space because the wall color and just the general treatment of it has been changed up from the mostly white rooms in the rest of the house. It's a darker gray color and the carpet's been matched to the exact same color as the walls. And then there's a nice hit of pattern on this focal wall behind the daybed. One of the fun parts about working on this project is just how similar the bones were to my own home. It was like having a chance for a do-over. And this third floor is really what I wish I had done in my own home. Really maximizing the space and also this skylight just gives the illusion of higher ceilings. This house is a huge transformation. It took 10 months from top to bottom, which is a significant amount of time, but there was a lot of changes. This house used to blend into the street and was a bit of an ugly duckling, and now it really shines. It's traditional in many ways, but there's also these really cool, more trendy elements that my clients really pushed me for, and I'm super happy that we did because the overall look is a really great combination of both of our styles. I know that they're really happy with this and will be here for a long time to come.